Hey, welcome to the bathroom. We're going to take a look at some bath exhaust fans and we're going to look at some easy tests we can do to make sure they're working properly without using $2,000 worth of equipment. We want to make sure that they're pulling the moist, damp air out of our bathrooms and exhausting that to the outside of the house. We're going to start out turning on the fan. It's making a lot of noise, but we want to know if it's actually moving air out of the room. You take a piece of toilet paper, put it to the side of the fan. Now we can see on this one, we don't have a whole lot of suction. We can get it to hold, but there's not much there to it. So we're moving air out. Next thing we want to do is make sure this is going outside of the building. We left the bath fan we were testing running inside while I came outside to look for the terminations and I found it out here on the gable end of the house. If we take a close look, you can see the damper flaps are moving a little bit and they're open. So we've got some air moving through that vent to the outside. So that's a good sign. You might be able to find these on the roof or underneath the eaves of the house. You'll have to look close. If it doesn't have a damper on it that you can see opened or moving, then you might need to grab a ladder, get up close and feel for some air moving through it. Um, if you can't find a vent termination on the outside of the house, then it might be time to get up into the attic and see where that fan is moving its air to. Hey, welcome to the attic. Assuming you're comfortable climbing into your attic, what can you look for up here? We found the location of our bath exhaust fan just over here. Um, and we want to make sure that it's covered over with insulation right now. If the fan wasn't vented to the outside, there was no duct connected to it. What we'd want to look at is the roof deck over the location of that fan where you would have that warm moist air blowing into the attic in the winter what can happen is that moisture can condense on the underside of your roof it can cause moisture damage you can get mold build up and we really want to avoid that so that's why it's important to get this vented to the outside in our case we do know that it's vented to the outside but let's take a look at the venting for this fan we can follow from the fan location over to here and we can see our venting is a vinyl flex vent coming out from under the insulation and it goes across the vented soffit of a porch and we can see some sagging there. So two things, one, this long flexible vent can really reduce our airflow, which could account for some of the low airflow. The other issue this fan has is in the winter, we'll get water leaking through the porch roof. So we're having that warm, moist air from the bathroom showers. It's condensing in the uninsulated portion of the vent, collecting water and leaking out in some places. So really need to get this venting replaced, some smooth metal venting, maybe find a closer place to terminate it through the roof and we should get some improved airflow through that bath exhaust fan. So we want to find our location of the fan, make sure it's connected to venting that goes outdoors. We want to make sure that all of our vent duct is insulated as well, either with a, a duct wrap or buried underneath our attic insulation so that we don't get that condensation building up inside. Back to the bathroom, what are some other signs you can look for that might indicate that your bath exhaust fan just isn't cutting it? If you're running your fan during a shower and letting it operate for another 15 to 20 minutes afterwards, and you're still getting excessive moisture buildup on your mirrors, that might not be a good sign. We also want to take a look at the ceiling and the walls around our shower enclosure. We want to make sure there's not any moisture staining, mildew buildup in there. Simple rule of thumb, you want to have about one CFM or one cubic foot per minute of air movement through your fan for every square foot of your bathroom. 
This one's about 80 square feet, so we want to have an 80 CFM fan. Most bath exhaust fans are going to have a label with their CFM rating inside the fan, which we can access by removing the cover. In most cases, you can either pull down the fan or you may need to undo a small bolt inside the fan to open it up. Inside our fan, we can see our rating label from the Home Ventilation Institute. And we can see here that our fan is rated for 50 CFM. So we could also look at upgrading this fan to something larger that would be more suitable for our bathroom to improve the airflow. Another thing we should look at is cleaning the fan. We want to have this dusted off. You can run a vacuum with a soft brush to clean out the dust, and that'll also improve our airflow as well. So on this fan, we know that it's exhausting the air to the outside of the building, which is good. We can improve the airflow by replacing some of that venting up in the attic, give us a little better airflow that way. Um, if that doesn't improve the airflow enough, we know that the fan is a little bit undersized for the bathroom as is based on its rating. So in the future, we could look at upgrading it to a, a fan with a greater capacity. The newer fans have a lot of features. One that I always recommend is a moisture sensor, either in the fan or in the switch itself. It's gonna turn the bath exhaust fan on as soon as the humidity rises in the room, and it's gonna keep the fan running until it's all been exhausted out. So there's our bath fan inspection. Hopefully it's got some tips you can use. The most important thing, of course, is once you know your bath fan is working and blowing that moist 